In 1867, the bricklayer George Adams lived in a cottage at 141 Tannhouse Lane, Alton, with his wife Harriet and their six children. Fanny Adams, the fourth of these children, had been born in 1859. Described as tall and an intelligent girl, she was known for her lively, cheerful disposition. On Saturday the 24th of August 1867, a fine and sunny day, Fanny Adams, her younger sister Lizzie, and her friend Minnie Warner wanted to go for a stroll on the flood meadows nearby. Mrs Adams had no objection to them going out, since the small Hampshire town of Alton was considered particularly safe and quite a place to live. In fact, there had been no serious crime there within living memory. As the three little girls were walking towards the flood meadows, they chanced to meet a neatly dressed young man, solicitor's clerk, Frederick Baker. He was well known to be a friend of little children, and he often spoke to them and gave them money to buy sweets. And indeed, Baker produced a penny and a half, which he gave to Minnie Warner and Lizzie Adams to buy sweets. He then gave Fanny another half penny. The girls knew Baker, who stood quietly watching them as they played and ate berries. Then suddenly, and wordlessly, picked up Fanny Adams and made off with her. The other girls ran home, but were unable to tell an adult what had just happened. Instead, they carried on playing until the neighbour, Mrs Gardner, came and asked them where Fanny was. When she heard that Fanny had been carried off by a man, she and Mrs Adams made their way to the flood meadows where they saw Frederick Baker skulking near a gate, separating the meadows from the hop garden. When Minnie Warner, whom the two women had taken with them, saw him, she identified him as the man who had given her the money and taken off with Fanny. When they asked him what he had done with Fanny, he denied taking her, although he admitted giving the children some money to buy sweets. When Mrs Gardner exclaimed, I have a great mind to give you charge of the police. He suddenly replied that you could do what you liked. Since both Mrs Gardner and Mrs Adams knew Frederick Baker was supposed to be a respectable man, they were reluctant to challenge him any further. Perhaps other children were wrong and perhaps Fanny had left them to go playing elsewhere. They hoped. The two women went home, but after Fanny had not returned home by 7pm, they alerted the neighbours, and a search was made. In the hop garden, one of the neighbours was aghast to find Fanny's head stuck on two hop poles. One of the ears had been cut off, both eyes had been gouged out, and the murderer had cut her mouth from ear to ear. Shouting with horror and alarm, the Alton countrymen found parts of Fanny strewn all over the hop garden and nearby fields. Her arms and legs had been cut off. Various internal organs were scattered on the ground, although the heart, sternum, they were never found. When Harriet Adams heard what had happened to Fanny, she became frantic and rushed off to tell her husband, who was playing cricket in a field. But she collapsed on the way and was taken back home by neighbours. When informed that his daughter had been murdered and dismembered, George Adams grabbed hold of a loaded shotgun and went into the hop garden to look for the creature baker, but returned home without having found him. The local police were called, and that very same evening, Superintendent Cheney arrested the main suspect, Frederick Baker, in the solicitor's office. There was an uproar in Alton. News of the horrible murder spread like wildfire, and a hostile mob followed Baker all the way to the police station. He had been drinking in a pub nearby and had told the other pub visitors that he was going to leave the town for good. When his fellow clerk, Morris Biddle, remarked that he might find it difficult to get another job, he answered, ironically considering what he had just accomplished, that he always get a job as a butcher. Baker's shirt and trousers were stained with blood and two small blood-stained knives were found on him. Then there was a matter of his office diary containing the note, 24th of August, Saturday, killed a young girl. It was fine and hot.
Frederick Baker was a short, thin, 29-year-old man of cadaverous appearance. His parents had been respectable, God-fearing people who had provided him with a good education. Before he came to Alton, he had worked in Guildford, where he had a member of two literary societies and an active member of the Penny Savings Bank and Sunday School Teacher. He began to drink, however, and was ousted from his position at the Debating Society. He wanted to marry the lady maid of a certain Mrs Hayden, but some mean-spirited person wrote a poison pen letter to her, detailing all of Baker's shortcomings, and the engagement was broken. After this, his drinking grew worse. It was said that he had once been under suspicion for having lured a little girl into a disused chalk pit, but the matter had been hushed up by his family and friends, and the girl's family soon left town. After coming to Alton, Frederick Baker did his work at the solicitor's office. Although his hard drinking continued, he was a familiar sight at the local beer houses. Some people thought him quite odd. He had a mania for various gluttonous exploits, like devouring large poor pies and drinking bottle after bottle of stout, or eating a number of uncooked poor sausages. Nevertheless, he had no police record prior to the murder of Fanny Adams. The coroner's inquest on Fanny Adams was opened at the Duke's Head Tavern in Alton on the 27th of August. Minnie Warner was old enough to be the first witness and described the ill-fated outing to the flood meadows. A number of people described the ghoulish hunt for the body parts in the hot garden and Morris Biddle recalled his sinister conversation with Frederick Baker the evening of the murder. Dr. Leslie thought that Fanny Adams had been struck down with a large stone before being dismembered but with a sharp knife. Professor Taylor, the London analyst, could verify that Baker's clothes and knives were stained with blood. The inquest returned to the verdict of murder against Frederick Baker and the local magistrates committed him to stand trial a large mob had congregated outside the police station and they booed and hooted at Baker. Several police constables were struck by objects thrown by the rowdy mob. Frederick Baker stood trial for murder. On the 5th and 6th of December 1867, the court was full of spectators and a large mob waited outside. Since the horrible nature of the murder, of innocent little Fanny Adams had caused widespread anger and revulsion. Every newspaper in the country reported its outcome. Minnie Warner was given a large doll to keep her occupied during the long dreary trial. Since the evidence against Frederick Baker had seemed rock solid, the only thing the defence could try was to play the insanity card. The jury was wholly unimpressed with the defence's case. Frederick Baker was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. He was hanged at Winchester Jail on the 24th of December in front of a crowd of more than 6,000 people, none of whom seemed any worse for this Christmas entertainment. Before the execution, Frederick Baker had written to Fanny's parents, confessing his guilt. All of a sudden, he had got a strong impulse to steal away and murder a little girl. He had been enraged by her crying, but had done her death without any struggle. He vehemently denied having violated the child. A stone for Fanny Adams was erected in the local cemetery. A tall, handsome, stone-shaped cross. It bears the inscription, Sacred to the memory of Fanny Adams, aged eight years old and four months, who was cruelly murdered on Saturday the August 24, 1867. Fear not them that kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. A quote from Matthew, of course, makes a choice prediction concerning the fate of Baker in the afterlife. There was a cabinet card photograph with the two girls of Minnie Warner and Lizzie Adams standing by Fanny's gravestone. It is today quite a rarity and much sought after by collectors of criminal memorabilia.
the murder of Fanny Adams caused considerable public concern. The contemporary newspaper reports concentrated on the youth and innocence of the victim and the extreme brutality of the murderer. Everyone living in England at the time would have known the name of Sweet Fanny Adams. Two years after the murder in 1869, tins of mutton were introduced into the rations of the Royal Navy. With grisly nautical humour, the sailors likened these lumps of meat and gristle to the butchered remains of poor Fanny. Indeed, Fanny Adams became naval slang word for mutton or mutton stew, and a naval mess tin or cooking pot is still referred to as a fanny. It was not until later that Sweet Fanny Adams came to mean nothing. The term for whore has been long with us, with that meaning, although how long it is not clear. The coincidence of Fanny Adams' initials caused F.A. or Fanny Adams to be used as a euphemism for fuck all. It is sad but true that this uncouth linguistic oddity is today all that the blameless young Alton murderer victim is remembered for.